Welcome! In this video tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to make the skeleton frame model of a planet to scale. So you'll see here I have on the screen what we're going to aim for, and these are the different pieces that we're going to use the laser cutter to cut out. So in order to get started, let's go ahead and go to create a new design. So you have to log into Tinkercad and create a new design. We're going to want to change the name of this. And instead of one of the funky names they give you, let's go ahead and name it our last name. And whatever planet we have. So dash uh, Jupiter. But I did planet X before because I'm just going to pick up some values. I'll do planet Y. You name it for the planet that you're doing. Save changes. So now once the change is saved, we're going to want to go and edit the grid. And we're, for grid size, we're going to use about 580 millimeters by 300 millimeters. And update the grid. Okay, so far so good. So now we have this nice large blank grid. And we are going to start by placing a ruler on this grid. Because we're doing this to scale, so we need to be real careful about the size of all the pieces. Next, let's pick a shape, and we're going to do a cylinder. Place a cylinder on there. Let's zoom in on this cylinder and change the height to 5 millimeters. And we're going to change the, this is our Y dimension, and this is our X dimension. We're going to keep these identical, but we're going to have to look at our sheet to see exactly what size. So this will be whatever your scale size planet is. I'm just going to make something up here. We'll do 190 uh, millimeters by 190 millimeters. Um, and again, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Place it down on our grid. And we can get a different view of this. Okay, so there we go. That is the scale size of our planet. Next, we need to um, create the ribs and shape the ribs. And, in order to do that, we'll go through a couple different steps. First one, create a cylinder. And let's go ahead and change this cylinder to a hole. And we will, again, change the hole to 5 millimeters tall. And let's, um, we can go ahead and align this hole into the center of our planet. So we select both of them and adjust and align. And we can just click the center tabs to make sure it's in the center. Now, let's go ahead and select just the hole. And we're going to use a function here. We're going to hold down the Option or the Alt button while we click one of the white corner handles. And what that's going to do is that's going to keep the middle in the same place while we drag. And that will allow us to keep our circle centered, our hole centered, but resize it. So what we want to do is we want to make this hole so that there's about, about two centimeters of rib left over on the side here, two centimeters on the sides, and one centimeter on the bottom. And if it's a little bit bigger, that's fine. I wouldn't go any smaller than that. Right? The exact dimensions aren't too critical here. We just want this to be you know, 20 to 25 millimeters and this to be 10 to 15 millimeters. Okay, so now once we've done that and we're sure it's still in the middle, let's go ahead and select everything here and make sure that we group them together. So we, these are now grouped and we have our, uh, we have our outline. The next step is that we want to split this into two different pieces. So we'll create a box. And um, you'll hear me say this a few times during the video, change the height to 5 millimeters. And right now we can just drag it to the approximate size that would go ahead and um, when we change it to a hole, it would split this in half. So we want this to intersect the top and the bottom. We want it to be in the exact middle. So let's go ahead and select it and select our arc and group it. Oh, we don't want to group. We want to go ahead and select 
and select this and align. Align it in the center and you can align it in the center vertically too. Change it to a hole and select the outside and now group. So now we have our two halves. Now what's interesting about this is that the halves are the exact distance apart that we need. So these two ribs are spaced so that the diameter here is the same diameter of our planet. And we're going to take advantage of that to um, place the ribs, the support disks that we will need to hold our ribs together. So let's go ahead and take a box and um, hopefully by now you've predicted that the first thing we're going to do is change the height to five millimeters and place this box over in the center, approximately the center. And what we want to do is we want to change the, the Y or the, uh, the width of this box, right, the Y direction to 3.5 millimeters. We want to make sure that stays 3.5 millimeters. Right. Now, let's go ahead and put this box in the very center of our ribs. So now we can go ahead and select the box, hold down shift to select the ribs as well, and we're going to do a line and align it in the center in both directions. Next we want to resize this rib. And in order to do this we're going to have to use the midline handle. All right, because we want to resize it in this direction and we don't want any other direction to change. So we use the midline handle here. It's solid black and when we hover over it, it turns red. Hold down the option key and what that will do is that will s stretch it out both ways. And we want to intersect it with the ribs here. And the exact amount that it intersects isn't critical, but it should be about 10 millimeters, maybe a little bit more. Um, so this is the size of one of the support disks that we're going to need to create. So we should make a note of the length of this. It's 167 millimeters. Your, yours will be different. All right, so I'm going to make a note of this. So the support disk size, first one was 167 millimeters. We're going to need that for later. Next, let's create a copy of this support disk by just pressing Command D while it's selected. So Command D creates a copy. Use just the up arrow to move it up. And this will let us keep it centered so we don't have to recenter it. If you do move it to the left or right, that's fine. You just have to make sure to use the align tool to put it back in the center. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this and resize it. All right, so again, we're going to use the option, hold down the option button, and pick that midline handle and drag it over so it's going about midway maybe a little bit less into the rib and now since we held the option button should do the same thing on both sides All right. now let's click off of that make sure you click off of it then click back on and press command D to duplicate it and now use the arrow keys and now let's bring this down and if you hold the shift button, you can bring it down faster to the bottom of your model. And the exact placement isn't critical here. But what is critical is the size. So this is 93 and this is 93. So let's make a note of that. 93 millimeters. And we're going to need two of those. So. Um, let's record that we've got two times that, so two of those. Keep track of those support disk sizes. So now what we want to do is we want to make the notches 
in our rib. So let's change these to holes. So we can select all three of these, change it to a hole, and then we can go ahead and select the rib and group it. And there we go, those are our ribs. Now in order to fit more on the sheet, we want them to all nest together tightly. So let's, we wanna get rid of this side over here. So let's create a box and change it to a hole and, if, and just cover up that side. And then let's press shift to select both of them and group it so that we only have one side of it. All right. Now, let's go ahead and place this in the edge here All right. and select it and press Command D and then use the arrow keys to bring your copy that you just made, right? You press Command D to create a copy and use the arrow keys to bring it out and you want it to nest together as closely as possible with the one next to it without touching or overlapping. So you want a good two millimeters at least in between. So we can bring it back there. And now, if you keep this one selected, now if you press Command D again, it'll duplicate it and move it. So we can go ahead and create, let's create seven of those. Keep pressing Command D to create additional ones. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those are our ribs. We've created the ribs, congratulations. Next, we want to go ahead and create the support disks. So the support disks are just going to be cylinders and the size of the cylinders are going to be right here. So let's create the biggest one first. The biggest one is 167 um, millimeters. Let's go ahead and uh, create this disk and change the height to five millimeters. And then the X and the Y to our dimension that we had here, 167 millimeters, 167, 167 by 167. All right, and we can zoom out and let's place it in here Keep it kind of tight to the others. Right. Then, we've, this is our larger support disk. Now, to conserve space, all right, we can go ahead and hollow this out, and we'll use the inner material here for one of our smaller disks. So, the smaller disks are 93 millimeters. So let's go ahead and make a hole that's, that's just a little bit bigger than that. Let's say 100 millimeters. I added 5 or 10 or something in between to the size. So create a cylinder, um, change it to 5 millimeters tall, and then change it to 100 millimeters on each side, and change it to a hole. And let's go ahead and align this hole in the center here. So, align, let's click on this one because we want to align it to this one, bring it in the center here, and in the center here, and there we go, there's our hole. So let's go ahead and um, select both of these and group them together. Once that groups, we've got some room to go ahead and make one of our smaller rings, support rings. So bring it out here, another cylinder, change it to five millimeters tall, and change the dimensions to match the smaller support ring. 93 on each side, and let's align it in the middle. Shift and adjust, align, click over here because we want it in the middle here, right here, and then we have these two. All right, here's a larger support ring, here's a smaller one. We need two smaller ones, so let's go ahead and select this, press Command D, and we can go ahead and drag this out. And now we have 
all the pieces that we're going to need for our skeleton model of the planet. So we need to prep this for laser cutting. First step is to bring out a box and take this box. This box, we're actually going to make it, let's make this one slightly shorter. Let's make it three millimeters and let's place it in the top left corner of our model. And let's drag it out so that it goes underneath all the parts we need to have. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and make sure that it is make sure that it is slightly larger than all of our parts. All right, but not too large. You don't want it much larger at all because it will waste material. So now let's go ahead and take all of the parts that we want and actually change all of our parts to holes. So we'll select all of these. Change them to a hole. And then we will hold down shift again to select the red, rec the red box and group everything together. And once it's grouped, that's what we need. So this is the file, the template that we need for the laser cutter. What I want you to do now is go to Design, Download for 3D Printing. And when you do that, there's an option to download for laser cutting. So click this .svg and download it for laser cutting. And you might have to take a second to wait for that to download. Once it does download, you can go to the file and you can show in Finder, or you can just open up the Finder by itself and go to Downloads. And then you can uh, drag it out on your desktop. And there's a link up on the board. I want you to upload the file to that link that is up on the board. Good luck. Let me know if you have questions.